Okay, here in the media server section, we're not actually going to be able to do a real tutorial on this section because, quite frankly, I just don't have any answers for you. I've done quite a bit of research on this, but nobody seems to really be able to demonstrate to me that this part of PrestaShop works quite yet, and there's no um, and there's no real documentation to show exactly how to set it up. Now, I have worked with uh, Nethercott Constructions and Nethercott Constructions believes that they do have a actual working version of this. When I tried to duplicate it, I wasn't able to do it myself, which means I may have set it up incorrectly. So this won't be too terribly useful to you, except that I'm going to try to explain how the media servers are supposed to work. And then down below the video, you'll find a few links to some valid information on what media servers are supposed to do. So in essence, what we're trying to do is share some of the load or create an opportunity to have parallel activity going on. So for instance, if you have a website, you've got a number of different things. You've got JavaScript files, CSS files, static images, uh, or let's just call them images for right now. But you can actually set up different locations to pull those resources from. So for instance, You've got one website, but you've got three file types that you want to download. So normally when your website downloads things, it will download them in series. So for instance, it might download uh, images first, JavaScript second, CSS third, or I don't know what the order would be, but it has to do one thing and finish that task and then go on to the next thing and finish that task and go on to the next thing. Uh, if you have a parallel setup, which is what the media servers allow you to do, you can actually download, sometimes in the literature I've read, I've seen as many as five parallel uh, connections at the same time. So they say between two and four, I believe, or two and five, it depends on what you read. But the way PrestaShop has it set up is that if it works, you have the ability to download up to three things at a time, and that's assuming your browser allows it, which... I believe Firefox does from the literature that I've read. So theoretically, it should make the uh, page, processing, page processing speed much faster, especially if you've got a lot of content to download. And uh, the trick is just getting it set up right. So what I've done is I've gone into my Bluehost account into the back office, and I've set up a subdomain called static.prestatraining Dot com and so I've already created that subdomain and then what I did is I just typed in static dot com and I saved it uh, unfortunately my site's still not working so apparently I'm not doing something right whether I set up the subdomain in my uh, PrestaShop cPanel incorrectly or this isn't the correct way to reference it. I really don't know. I've searched everywhere I can think to search on the forum and what have you. So this is a plea for those of you who may, who may know how to do this. If you do know how to do this, please comment uh, down below, and I'll be happy to redo the video once you've educated me on the correct way to do this. So for right now, I don't know that there's a lot of point in uh, trying to explain this anymore other than the concept is, is the media server should help you with you know, the speed of your system if you can create uh, these subdomains. Now there is, uh, I will say one other thing though too, there is uh, a possibility that you can create not subdomains, but you can create three different primary domains. They don't have to be a subdomain. So in other words, if you wanted to pay for three separate hosting accounts, Three, three separate prim primary domains, you could certainly do that too. Uh, it certainly would be nice to be able to do subdomains because with my Bluehost account, it doesn't actually cost any more money. I could just create, um, you know, if I wanted to, I could have created this as static server one, and uh, I could have created two other subdomains as well. I'm just going to show you what I mean here real quick. Let's say that I had created a, a second subdomain called static server 2, and then I created a third subdomain called static server 3. Well, subdomains with Bluehost, those don't cost me any extra money. I don't have to pay for any dom domain fees or any additional fees. 
But if I had three separate hosting accounts, which should work equally as well, uh, obviously you'd have to pay for those fees. So if you're already paying 10 or $20 a month for your hosting fees, you'd have to take that times, uh, you know, you'd have to add on one, two, possibly three more accounts because these are accounts beyond your primary domain. So that's uh, just a little bit more information that I was aware of. I thought I'd share with you. But I, I think we'll just stop there. And uh, once again, if anybody knows the correct way to do this, please comment below. And I think we'll all benefit from it in the end. So thank you very much. So now I'm going to move on to the next section. Okay, we're almost done. We have two sections left, the ciphering section and the caching section. So let's talk about the ciphering section first. I want you to read this first sentence here. It says, mCrypt is faster than our custom Blowfish class, but requires the PHP extensions mCrypt. And uh, I did have it in check on my installation of PHP with my Bluehost server, and I do have that extension, so I don't have any trouble with it. But if you don't have it, or if you don't know if you have it, the best thing to do is just call your web host and ask them uh, how to figure that out. And if you don't have it installed, ask them to install it for you. It really shouldn't be any trouble for them to do. So that way, with mCrypt installed, you can use the top cipher here. And forgive me if I mispronounce, but I believe it's called Dreendal with the mCrypt library. And you want to use that because that is the faster and more modern of the ciphers. Um, Blowfish has been around for a long time, but it's getting pretty old. And it's uh, it seems to be from the literature that I've read that this particular cipher is the stronger and more preferred cipher to use. If you want a little bit more information on it, I've put a couple links to two Wikipedia articles one on the Nightingale cipher and the other one on the Blowfish cipher. So it's not something that an ordinary store owner would ever need to know, but if you're curious, go ahead and check the links out. Okay, let's move on to the caching section. Now the caching section, the very first option that you've got is to either use cache or not use cache. And um, this section has proved very difficult for me to to include in this video because I can't get any really good information on the difference between memcached and the file system that you have an opportunity to use. So what I did is I spoke with my hosting company, Bluehost, and they filled me in a little bit and then I read a bunch of information on the PHP website and the memcache website. So before I get into that, I want to show you one thing. If you have uh, a desire to choose memcached, you have to basically go up here to the top here and you'll see this warning and normally it's like this it says there is one warning click here to see more so we'll click here and it says to use memcached you must install the memcached PECL extension on your server and then you can click through here and it will take you to uh, php.net and it'll go through this, what I would consider relatively complex bit of information on how to get the PECL extension on your server and then what to do about it. And quite frankly, it was more than I could handle. So I called my web host and I asked him about the PECL extensions with Memcached. And they basically said that they would be willing to install it for me. And then I spoke a little later in the day with another tech and uh, they said that, well, they can't install the memcached. And they were talking to two different higher level technicians. So I'm getting some really confusing information at this point. And I guess what it is, is some hosts may or may not be able to install memcached. So you might be wondering, what, what is memcached? Well, basically what it is, it's caching in your host's server's memory. So if, like, for instance, Bluehost, they have a whole bunch of machines, the web servers. And then these machines all have RAM. Well, if you use memcached as your caching system, you can actually cache small amounts of information in the RAM of their servers, which gives pretty fast access times compared to using, for instance, a file system. And a file system is the hard drive. So memcached actually stores cache in volatile RAM memory, whereas file system actually writes it to a hard drive. So most of the time, you can make the assumption that memcached is probably faster than file system. But from what they told me, that isn't always true either. It kind of depends on the file size and um, you know some files just are inappropriate to be stored in RAM memory because they're too big anyway. For instance, if you have a, 
uh, you know, like a, a megabyte size file, it probably would be much better served from the file system versus a lot of smaller files like product pictures, which could be 30 or 40 kilobytes. Those would be better served from memcache. So I don't have a real good explanation for you yet as far as what to do with caching. For right now, I'm just leaving my caching off until I get it figured out and I get it worked out with Bluehost. So I'm sorry that can't be more helpful, but I think the lesson of um, lesson of the day is you should talk directly to your web host because it could be very web host dependent. And it could be uh, dependent on whether it's a shared server environment or a virtual private server. So there are a lot of things that go into determining whether or not caching is going to be for you. Okay, so that's the bulk of the tutorial. But before the tutorial ends, I'm going to take some time and actually show you uh, by using Google's PageSpeed what some of these settings actually do and, and how it does make a difference. So when we come back, I'm going to show you where to get Google PageSpeed and how to install it in your Firefox browser. And you can also install it in a Google Chrome browser. And then we'll use Google PageSpeed to monitor some of the changes that we make. So for those of you that aren't interested in that, uh, that information, uh, feel free to exit the tutorial. You've basically learned everything you need to learn about the settings. But if you actually want to see what some of the differences in the settings can do as far as the, the page load speed, I'll show you by using Google PageSpeed and one of my, um, uh, just one of my websites.